with the first successful ventures into the edges of space, a new technology has been created. The technology of aerospace vehicles. The tremendous strides made in aerospace vehicle development demand a new breed of pilot one with training as advanced and sophisticated as the vehicles he must operate. To meet this demand, the United States Air Force established the Aerospace Research Pilot School in 1962 at Edwards Air Force Base, California. Here in the most advanced technological course ever offered in the Air Force, Select pilots are trained for manned space research programs. These men hold degrees in engineering and science. Each has extensive flying time in high performance jets. And each has met rigid physical requirements. After a stiff refresher course in math and engineering, they plunge into an academic program of computer theory, aerospace environment, bioastronautics, orbital mechanics, and aerodynamics. Theory is paralleled by a flying program designed to maintain proficiency in conventional stability and control testing techniques and to experience the handling qualities of a wide variety of vehicles. An intensive flight simulator program allows the investigation of certain aerospace vehicle characteristics. This cockpit integrated with computers simulate certain flight conditions of space, such as rocket boost, vehicle positioning, orbital rendezvous, and re-entry. A reaction control simulator, which rides on an air bearing, simulates the low dynamic pressures of ballistic flight in space. The pilot learns to control vehicle attitude by activating appropriate control jets in the reaction control system. Upon graduation from this intensive and demanding course, these aerospace research pilots will be qualified to evaluate the performance of space vehicles and the related systems. They will be ready for space missions. Regardless of how effective flight simulation may be, space training must ultimately be experienced in space itself. Relatively inexpensive vehicles are needed that can provide space training missions on a routine scheduled basis. The Starfighter is a logical choice for the world's first space trainer. It has held the altitude, speed, and time to climb records simultaneously, and it has been successfully tested in the wind tunnel up to Mach 3.5. The F-104 design and proven performance makes it an effective vehicle in which to train aerospace pilots at minimum program cost. To meet this need, three Air Force F-104A Starfighters were delivered to Lockheed California Company, Burbank, in September 1962 to be modified into the world's first aerospace trainers, known as the NF-104A. Just as the T-33 T-Bird provided operational transition from propeller-driven aircraft to jet power, the NF-104A will provide operational transition from manned fighters to manned spacecraft. It will be the first aircraft in which the pilot can both take off and land in a conventional manner and still experience spaceflight. Changes in the external configuration from starfighter to aerospace trainer include an instrumented nose boom, a metal nose cone in place of plastic, redesigned air inlet cones, and a reworked empennage section to accommodate a throttle-controlled rocket engine. 
During development of this advanced trainer, pilots from the Aerospace Research Pilot School visit Lockheed's facilities and contribute to its evaluation. They keep abreast of program developments because their knowledge and experience is indispensable to the design and development of this and future aerospace vehicles. This group will be among the first to fly the aerospace trainer and then subsequently conduct training programs for future space crews using the NF-104A as the primary aircraft in the curriculum. Internally, the significant changes are in propulsion. The existing power plant, the J79-3A, is being replaced by the Dash 3B. And the selected rocket engine is the throttle-controlled AR2, which delivers 6,000 pounds of thrust. An X-15 type reaction control system has been adapted to the aerospace trainer. It operates on hydrogen peroxide pressurized by nitrogen. Eight reactors in the nose provide pitch and yaw control, and two reactor motors in each wingtip provide roll control. The wingtips have been extended 24 inches to accommodate the roll control system. A corollary lift advantage is also gained. These reactors are small rocket motors which are operated by a controller mounted on the aircraft instrument panel. With strictly tactical equipment and systems removed, modification involves the installation of components peculiar to the aerospace trainer. Just forward of the inlet ducts, two hydrogen peroxide tanks supply the oxidizer for the rocket engine. They are connected in series and pressurized by nitrogen. In the nose cone, a smaller tank provides hydrogen peroxide for the reaction control system. It is pressurized by its own nitrogen bottle. A battery provides auxiliary power after jet engine flame out and bottle nitrogen maintains cockpit pressurization. Electrical and electronic equipment includes radio, IFF and radar beacon, as well as stability augmentation for both aerodynamic and reaction control. Instrumentation includes an automatic observer, an oscillograph recorder, as well as additional specialized flight and engine instruments. The aerospace training flight is designed to provide specific pilot experiences. Starting from the base, the flight will begin with the initial climb out. At 40,000 feet and Mach 2, the pilot will ignite the rocket engine accelerate to Mach 2.2 and make a 3G pull-up. At approximately 80,000 feet, the pilot shuts down the jet engine. During this low Q phase, he will gain experience with the reaction control system and he will operate for nearly a full minute under zero G conditions. At approximately 116,000 feet, hydrogen peroxide depletion will result in rocket engine burnout. The resultant ballistic trajectory will carry him to an apogee of approximately 120,000 feet. Letdown and re-entry is planned so that the final phase, with adequate fuel reserve, will be directly over the base, thus completing a realistic flight simulation of an aerospace mission. The boundaries of today's technology must be continually extended man is to probe effectively beyond the limits of the atmosphere. Aerospace trainer development and aerospace research pilot training will help translate future vehicle designs onto today's drawing boards. Together they will provide a steady accumulation of engineering knowledge necessary to space age pilot training and to successful manned operations into the reaches of outer space. <laughs>